welcome. It is a great honor to welcome each of you here today to Middle Tennessee State University in the Todd Art Gallery to witness and view the dual art exhibit, Collected Memory, Creative Expression Through Contemporary Art, and the Words to Live By. These two exhibits showcase the beautiful and outstanding works of local, regional, national, and international artists in the exhibit entitled Collected Memory, Creative Expression Through Contemporary Arts, and Senior Adults, Veterans, and Community Youth in the exhibit entitled Words to Live By. Barbara and I, as curators of the both exhibits, view the two exhibits as a way to focus and foster the exchange of ideas, whether difference, voices, and experience occur across digital, abstract, experimental, and traditional medium. In these two exhibits, the artist's work tells a story of personal and cultural memories. We are thankful to the 26 artists that allowed their works to be displayed here today. We would like also to give a special thanks to Middle Tennessee State University, the Department of Arts and Design, Todd Art Gallery, and the staff for their assistance in this current exhibit on display. As you view the various artistic works, we hope that you will allow the art to take you on a journey that is inspiring, uplifting, and empowering. Again, welcome to Middle Tennessee State University and the Todd Art Gallery. Good evening. Uh, I'm happy to be here, and I'm Barbara Hodges, and we're going to talk briefly about this piece, which I have here. This piece is entitled In Conversation. This is a mixed media um, um, artistic piece, and I'm an artist who enjoy using fabric or textiles in order to create the uh, artwork. In this piece, we have nine different figures and they're all doing different things. And I call this piece In Conversation because each figure here is in conversation with each other. Or as you noted towards the end here, you have the ninth figure with the man with his foot on the wooden box. And he represents the fact that he is in conversation with you, the art audience, the observer. And one of the key things is that they have no faces because anyone should be able to put themselves into the imagery that we have here. Uh, I always like to put a little boy in, in my pieces here because they represent the innocence, uh, just the, the openness to be able to learn and to grow. Um, I use the folds because they give you that sense of dimensionality it stimulates the desire for people wanting to touch the artwork. And it's meant to draw you in. And I think that's what it does. So when we use the title In Conversation, it simply denotes the fact that conversations are the way that we have of transmitting stories. And stories become part of the memories. And as we know that memories can span communities, generations, uh, nations. And we know that the fact that conversation is made up of words, and words carry power, and words have impact on people's lives. So this is just a piece just to start the conversation, and the art audience would be the one that would determine what that conversation, how it begins, and more importantly, how it ends. I would like to wake you to this piece. This piece is called The Beings of Love which is who was created by Miss Jill Woodworth Collier. Uh, she's not able to be here today, and I just want to stand in for her and tell you a little bit about uh, this piece of art. Um, this structure is actually, actually created 
uh, from paper mache and fiber. And Jill, this piece actually bridges both shows that we have because Jill actually created this piece based on a famous quote by William Blake. And I'm gonna read that to you. We are put on earth for a little space that we may learn to bear the beams of love. And when Jill created this piece, I asked her about it. She told me that, that basically that we are, every individual is born with a purpose. We are not here just haphazardly and that we are created in the divine image of God. And because we have a purpose, that is very important that we live that purpose. And he has a divine plan for each and every one of us in order to carry out that, pur purchase, that, that purpose so that you ultimately will be able to reach your destiny. And what I like about this piece as you look at it, you see all of the, with the three dimensionality you see how the physical body may look like there's distortion in, or abstract in nature. And that represents the fact that the human spirit is resilient. The human body may undergo a lot of changes, distortion, but through it all, the power of love helps you to overcome. Through the power of love, you're able to overcome physical challenges, illnesses, you're able to overcome social injustices, you're able to overcome whatever life may throw at you. And these uh, fiber art with the natural branches and twigs represent the arrow that this abstract figure may utilize in shooting, and shooting out whatever it takes to overcome these different obstacles and challenges. So this is a very unique abstract piece because it helped bridges the gap between the two shows here, Words to Live By, based on the quote from William Blake, and also the concept about collected memories. Because memories, uh, living life, human uh, life experiences, is what we utilize to help us get through these different challenges. Hi, uh, my name is Vicki Cat Matthews, and I have been involved in art all of my life. Um, I didn't have any real professional art training, just kind of grew up in an artistic background. Uh, was a professional tattoo artist since 1984, ran my own studio. I was one of the first women tattooists in the industry, and that was kind of groundbreaking. And uh, since then, I've gotten involved with the uh, uh, Kids for the Creative Arts program. I started out as a volunteer, and then uh, after a while, they said, you know, you really kind of got a little bit more going for you than just signing up kids. So I started in with teaching the classes, and now it's become a really, really important part of my life. Um, from there, we've segued into the uh, Senior Empowerment Program, and um, I'm one of the teachers for that also. And uh, with the COVID thing going on, it's kind of one of the hardest things I've had to deal with. With all the hardships, toilet paper hasn't been one of them, uh, a lot of other things, but I've really missed my art community, and I've missed interacting with the other people and, and the kids. That's been one of the hardest things. Um, the piece that I created and brought in here, uh, the title of it is Two Hands. My quotation, my words to live by are, you have two hands, one to help yourself, the second to help others. Mm -hmm. And I believe that uh, giving back is way more important than getting. Um, my piece, if anybody knows me, could identify that I did this piece. Um, I do herbalism, I teach classes, and I also grow my own herbs and make products and that. And I did this as representative of some of the things that I grow and make and share with people. Um, the cat represents a rescue animal because I'm a real sucker for a rescue animal. Right now we've just adopted two street kittens and they're gold, so that's what color they are, so that's why they're that color. 
Uh, paint brushes are there to represent, of course, the uh, arts and how important it is to me that I give to others to teach the art and mm -hmm. and that. Um, this is my horse, Willow. She's my therapy horse. Um, I give pony rides to kids. I do for the churches. I do for um, different uh, groups and that. Um, my daughter-in-law, through her church, she had some refugee children, and I did a pony ride for them and whatever. I also deal with autistic and you know, people with special needs, people who maybe never had a chance to be around something as awesome as ours. Willow's been my partner now. She's going to be 27, so I've had her since she was a cult, and she's pretty special. Bonfire, very, very important to me because some of my best memories have taken place around the fire, whether it's making music with my friends or telling stories or swapping lies and dancing in the moonlight. It doesn't really matter. So um, I did the background as a rainbow because I wanted it to be all-inclusive of everyone. I work at Kansas State University as an assistant art professor. Mm -hmm. um, I brought this piece up today called True Growth Culture, and it, 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 it centers around the idea of the black woman um, not only being a keeper of life, but keeper of culture, um, mm -hmm. continuing uh, the uh, ideas, the beliefs, the thoughts uh, of, of black culture, um, and not just within the county, but also without. Um, and I've done a series before um, about black women. You have black women, and this is kind of moving into a different direction. And it's called the Keeper Series. Um, and it speaks to the idea of, of us um, not only representing ourselves, but also other things. One piece is called Dream Keeper. Another piece is called uh, Keeper of the Flame, and in this case, Keeper of the Culture. And I, I thought it was really important to kind of harken back to also um, Black Arts Movement, um, particularly the Black Arts Party. I decided to use the, the Red Ray um, kind of as a, 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 an honor of, of the um, Minister of Culture. I decided to use the Red Ray in honor of Emory Douglas um, as the Minister of Culture uh, for the Black Panther Party. Um, it's a, um, an organization that was often misunderstood, uh, but the work they did continue to move on into the state. So kind of, you know, using that, the, the um, gap design work, you know, that you use for the communication pamphlets, the posters, um, in this way, uh, just to kind of liven up the, the space, but also promote and um, bring to honor the the black woman as people of culture. Uh, my name is uh, Mary Watkins. Uh, I live out of Walt Hill, Tennessee, and I graduated from MTSU in art in uh, 1972. Uh, I was inspired by this piece because of the fact it says my roots run deep. And I want to do that because of the hair and everything. Uh, there's a thing going around about African Americans wearing the dreads and dreadlocks and all of that. But I think that as people don't really realize that is, that is a part of our culture. So that's what inspired me to do this particular piece. When I say our roots were deep, when you look at us, you look at our skin color, but it's deeper than that. When you take a look at, I had my DNA done, when you look at that, we're just all over the place. You know, I'm part Native American, African American, I'm part uh, Irish, and uh, from Europe, I'm mean, part European and all that. So I'm just mixed up and I wanted people to know it's more than just about what you look at us and you see. Uh, whatever. That's why I was inspired to do this. And I have several pieces where I have the dreads and all of that because, you know, that to make laws as the way you're supposed to wear your hair. I think, you know, this day and time you wouldn't expect that, but it is. And I was inspired by this young man. He wanted to wrestle and he had dreads in the hair. The official told him he had to cut it off and he was in the file. That he had to cut it off because he had the dreads. The dreads. But that is a part of our culture. We want people to understand that. When you look at us, you look at our skin color. But it's deeper than that. When you look at us and you, we are the same when you look within, it's just that, that God wanted it that way. What would it look like if everybody looked the same? What would it look like if everybody had the same color? And everything he wanted us to be, he wanted to be different. That's the reason why he made it that way. So that's what inspired me to do this particular piece. 
Hello, my name is Ashley Buchanan, and I'm here at the Todd Gallery, and I'm super excited to be showing with the Hodges and the rest of the local artists. So I'm actually a alumni here from UTSU. I um, went to school for digital animation and did a minor in art, but I actually just started painting about four years ago. So my background is in more so film and video. And I've always been an artist. I love to draw and I love creating art. So I think I just kind of draw from whatever I'm visualizing to create whatever I want to go for. Mm -hmm. um, which comes to my pieces here. Um, I have this thing I love using street lights in my pieces um, to convey many different messages and so forth and just kind of play with the environment. Um, this piece is actually augmented reality. So and you can kind of see the birds flying. The connection's mm -hmm. a little slow. Um, but I actually got inspiration from the Discovery Center. This, that's why this piece is called Discovery. So what I do is I paint my pieces mm -hmm. and then I basically take this image and I play with it creating different types of animations. I do a lot of animations in uh, Blender and in After Effects and so forth like that. Cool. This one here is called Queen's Tape. And this was actually inspired by Gail Stoner's photo. Um, I actually was the painter laureate for Murfreesboro um, of 2018. And so as a collaborative, collaborative effort, um, we have the poet laureate and photographer mm -hmm. laureate. And so I was the painter laureate, and so we all chose a piece that we could all connect on. And so Gail Stoner had a picture he had found of this vacant lot with empty chairs and random stuff uh, missing. Um, so I created a scene from what I visualized from that piece. I actually kind of get the feeling of uh, almost like Alice in Wonderland feel kind of brought these figures and brought them to life and like you see the queen meeting with the rest of the queens and speaking you know we're all people i guess like when even we speak i think for me whenever i'm creating or doing anything as a person i just see everyone as equal and even though it's called meeting of the queens i made sure to like put crowns on each one even the little guys over here you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. um, um but you know Everyone, you know, we're all leaders, but you know, sometimes we have to follow in order to lead. My name is Lee Rawhizes Jr. The painting that we'll talk about this afternoon is called College Days with the Past. This is a mixed media collage of the decision that a young person makes when they first go off to college and the life, the independence that they have. We start off by looking at the move-in day that the family enjoys when they're moving the kids off into their own space and giving them their own time. A lot of times when a young person go off to school, in particular for the first time that they go off, they are allowed to do certain things and behave a certain way. This painting here tried to give a recognition to those decisions that that young person will make. Whether it will be uh, studying for a test or going out and partying on campus or things like that. In here we looked at the young person here and how they decide to study for a test by burning the midnight off. They go through a lot of phases in time of studying and that type of thing. Whereas other people decide to go on and, and do other things in college. That is a happy time for young people. They enjoy the experience of being away, making their own decision, and determine what life will be for them. One other decision that a, a young person makes is whether or not to uh, become part of an organization in college, especially in, in, in the black colleges, we have, and this painting here represents the 
first black, eight black uh, sororities and fraternities in the year that they was founded. From Alpha Phi Alpha in the beginning of 1906 to uh, Sigma Gamma Rho in 1922. A lot of these were formed at Howard University. Um, in particular, we have uh, Alpha Kappa Apple, uh, Omega Psi Phi. We also had uh, Phi Beta Sigma and Zeta Phi Beta was all at Howard University in Washington, D.C. Now, <clears throat> during that class period, and that's what those three figures there represent, that represent the line that I was on when I pledged Apple back in the 70s. Uh, the second figure here represent myself, Apple uh, Finksman number two. The thing around the next is what we call a tiki. And in what we did, we had to make the tiki's along with what we're not showing here, what we call a paddle. And that paddle is, is similar to the tiki, but it's, it's made out of wood. And it's, uh, you carry it any and everywhere you go. Uh, the school that I went to was Mississippi Valley State University in Enobino, Mississippi. I also put in here a transportation medium, which is my red car. I have a Malibu, a 396 Malibu. And that's what I traveled from Meridian, Mississippi to Enobino, Mississippi. Uh, going back and forth from when I go home on the weekends, I come back and go to school that morning and get off of there. But the main thing that this thing here does is let you go through the process from start, move-in day, to graduation day. We go through a lot of time, efforts, and, and things, making a decision, and say, okay, what will I do after I graduate, after I become that senior and leave college? Some notable people that went through uh, those fraternities, we have the late Martin Luther King. Junior. We have the late Thurgood Marshall. We have some notable people here in, in Murfreesboro, like Dr. Uh, Vincent Woodrow. But this is piece here, a mixed miniature lodge that represents the time that a young person spends from moving into college to graduation. Hi, I am Donna Woodley, and I am um, a professor at Tennessee State in Austin P. I teach uh, various art classes there, and so I was, um, again, I'm happy to be in the show here at MTSU at the Todd Gallery. Um, this particular piece is called Kelshika, and um, it, uh, it is actually, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a self-portrait, but I use my face to represent a symbol of, uh, or a way of talking about um, beauty and um, just a, a different take on the symbol of the mammy uh, because it has such a, a negative connotation in our society. And so I wanted to use the scar as a symbol of that and a way of talking about that. And then also as kind of a nod to um, the beautiful uh, Hattie McDaniel, who um, played Mammy in Gone with the Wind and won an Oscar for that role in the 1940s. And so, um, yeah, that's what this, this piece is about. It's a part of the series. Also, the name is important because um, it's a way of essentially celebrating kind of like those non-traditional um, names like Donna <laughs> uh, or, or it's, it's a way of celebrating the non-traditional name uh, in conjunction with a traditional name like Donna. So yeah, th this is the second piece that I have in the exhibition and i um, very proud to be here. And this is one of the pieces, um, this is called, the series is called The Royal Court. This particular piece is called Sir Brandon the Great, and it just deals with um, black men and the perception of black men in American society. 
uh, I use a toilet. A lot of the time in my artwork, I'll put different symbols that um, could have like a touch of humor in them, but then they're kind of like the vehicle to a more serious conversation. And so I, in this case, I use a toilet as a means of talking about royalty and a throne, um, because oftentimes people refer to the toilet as a throne. <laughs> and so um, I just wanted to use different elements uh, or play around with different elements to uh, talk about stereotypes of black people and then also talk about this idea of um, actual history of royalty. Uh, from Africa and then also kind of like this false sense of royalty within America, especially with the times that we're in in 2020 with a lot of deaths, um, unjustified deaths. So um, so yeah, this is, this is my piece. Um, it's a series. Uh, when it's all over, it'll be probably like about 15 pieces. Um, that's how I like to work. Um, I like to do series and, and it'll just be kind of a repetitive uh, theme. So uh, there are other men in the series that uh, involve, that include toilets and then other various uh, symbols, i.e. the basketball. So very glad to be a part of the exhibition.